I hate ironing. I'll do more or less anything to avoid it. So faced with this giant pile of laundry, I got easily distracted and I started to wonder why the shirt emerged from the washing machine looking like a tangled bag of rags. And how come the... I hate ironing. I'll do more or less anything to avoid it. Garments, why don't they need so much pressing? Since I'm a scientist, I know it's important to understand the theory before I embark on the methodology. And so it became important that before unleashing the iron in the board that I found out the answers to these pressing questions. And it turns out the wrinkles in the shirt all down to the chemistry of the plant-based fabrics. Cotton, hemp and so on are predominantly made of cellulose. And cellulose is what's known as a polymer. In this case, it consists of thousands of glucose molecules linked together to form linear chains. Now, each of those glucose subunits is sticky because it can bind to the neighbouring cellulose molecule via something called a hydrogen bond. And individually, these bonds are very weak, but together they form a very strong network that gives the fabric its strength. Now, the hydrogen bonds are particularly dynamic as they're forever breaking and then rapidly reforming. As a result, clothes start to take on the shape they are left. Now, it isn't a problem if I've been good and put them on a hanger, but it is an issue if I've just chucked them in a heap on the floor drape. And as they sit there in the pile, the bonds break and reform and the clothes take up the new shape of the fabric and the creases get set in place. Now, things get even worse when water enters into the equation, like in the washing machine. Water molecules insert themselves between the cellulose molecules, break up the hydrogen bonds and act like a lubricant, allowing the cellulose molecules to slide over each other. Then, when the fabric dries, the cotton keeps its now wrinkled shape and that is the state of the pile of shirts that now sits beside me. Now, this is where, of course, actually the hot steaming iron come in and can help. The combination of the heat and the moisture breaks the hydrogen bonds and as I apply these with a bit of pressure all the cellulose molecules are forced to lie parallel with each other so they flatten the cloth. But what if I want to avoid the ironing altogether? Now the crinkled look is always an option as I'm an academic I can just about pull it off but occasionally I do need a pressed shirt. I could go with the age old practice of starching my clothes to keep them crease free. Now that works because starch is another polymer made from glucose, so it too can form those sticky hydrogen bonds. But unlike cellulose, starch is made of a branched polymer. This means that if I apply it to the cellulose, it sticks and acts like a sort of scaffolding holding all the cellulose molecules in place. The drawback is, of course, that it gives me a rather stiff look. More to the point, the starch is soluble, so it just comes out in the wash. wash. And the net result is that it doesn't do much to reduce the list of chores. I still have to do the ironing, but now I have to apply the starch to boot. What I need is a permanent version of starch, and that's exactly what I get in easy iron clothing. Okay. Originally, formaldehyde was used to permanently link the cellulose molecules together, stopping them sliding about and limiting the amount of wrinkles that form. Now, more recently, formaldehyde, which isn't very nice stuff, has been replaced with a friendlier, but even less easy to pronounce, crosslinker, such as dimethylol dihydroxyethylene urea. The wrinkle-resistant shirts are good in a pinch, but I think they have a slightly plasticky feel, and I don't particularly like that. And more to the point, they still release tiny amounts of formaldehyde, which can irritate the skin. So after all that, the pile of laundry is still waiting for me. But at least I have the theory of ironing all straightened out. And so I suppose I best just get on with the practical session. Or, or maybe I could just go with the crumpled look and call myself a theoretical ironist.